Portsmouth, Ohio is a small river city at the southern end of the state. It has a rich history going back to the founding of Ohio. I grew up there and heard many stories of hauntings, and this is just one of them. At the south end of town is the Portsmouth Brewery, which was renovated in the 1970s and housed restaurants and shops. The alleyway that divides the Portsmouth Brewery and the adjoining restaurant had been plagued by sightings of a ghostly figure searching for some unknown quarry. When I was in high school, my mom had an antique shop in the building. The building had been used as a large-scale brewery in the 1940s, but that had left town many years ago. And at the time, an enterprising business owner actually put in a microbrewery. When my mom first moved in, For her antique shop, she had to work some nights moving merchandise, setting up cases, and pricing items. Now, my mom didn't have a superstitious bone in her body, and she did not believe in ghosts, goblins, or witches. Not at all. But one of those nights, she said she saw a strange man walking back and forth in the alleyway on the side of the building. At first, she didn't think anything of it. But after she saw him pass by the window for the fourth time, she went outside and saw the man, but he was walking away from her. She was reluctant to say anything, but found the courage to say, excuse me, my mom was very polite. The man just kept walking and then disappeared. Now, he didn't walk around a corner or step inside the building. He just disappeared, like he evaporated. My very non-superstitious mother got very creeped out. The next day she went to lunch at the nearby restaurant and asked the waitress about it and she said, oh the man in the hat. People have seen him down here for years. And that was that. There was no explanation. I did some research and couldn't find any lore about the man. Like, was he killed at the brewery or died in that alley? He was just a fixture of the area. The locals just accepted him. I decided to check it out myself later that week, and after several hours of waiting for something to happen, I was about to leave when I heard footsteps coming from the alley. I looked around the corner and saw the shape coming my way. I yelled out, asking what the man was doing, but got no answer. The shape just kept making its way towards me. I called out for him to stop, but he didn't. The black shape just made a beeline toward me. Then I felt a blast of cold air hit me full on. This scared me, and I stepped back and around the corner to think. I was only there for a few seconds, and then I looked back, and the alley was empty. I decided it was time to go home, and as I drove away, I glanced over my shoulder at the alley, and I saw the shape again, just standing at the end of the alley. From then on, I did my best not to go down there at night, and my mom's shop moved to another location, so I didn't have to go back there. And that was perfectly fine with me. In the center of my hometown is a fairly large cemetery, Greenlawn Cemetery. I remember hearing in a news story that said there were more dead people in Greenlawn than there were living people in the town. And I can believe that from my walks through the place. It was huge. I can remember seeing many names with the dates 1918 and 1919 from when the Spanish flu pandemic hit America. There were so many graves of small children who had died during those years. I had many walks through the grounds, which I used to find relaxing and peaceful, but now I tend to walk along the edge of the place because of an unsettling experience I had there. Greenlawn Cemetery was established in 1829 in the hilltop area of the town. There wasn't a lot of building around there then, but as the city boomed in the 1900s, 
The city grew around it to surround the green pastures of stones for the dead. One day while visiting the town, I was walking and decided to cut through the graveyard, not really thinking much that I was walking past the deceased. It was more like a pleasant city park to me. It turned out that I couldn't have been more wrong. As I got a bit into the grounds, I heard whispering coming from behind me. I stopped and spun to see if anybody was following me, but saw the area was empty of people. Just grass, bushes, trees, and gravestones. Then I felt a cold breeze blow through me, which made the hairs go up on my arm. I held my ground for a few moments and finally turned to continue my walk. I picked up my pace and was about halfway through my shortcut when I heard a cackling which stopped me in my tracks. I scanned around and saw nothing again. Then the cackling began, which caused me to look up and I saw the blackest of crows perched in a tree above me. It just looked at me unblinking. I was tempted to throw a rock at it, but I chose to just walk away. It cackled at me as I picked up my pace. As I neared the northern edge of the cemetery, the whispering came back full force and I froze in place. I surveyed the area and I could swear I saw a shape moving behind a gravestone. It lingered there and the whispering got louder. It echoed in my head and I could feel cold fear growing in my chest. I knew it was time to leave. I was close to running as I saw the cemetery fence approaching. I glanced around and saw several dark shapes that appeared to be asking me to stay. At least, that's what I heard. Stay. Stay forever. At this point, it was time to run, and I didn't care who saw me. I dashed toward the opening in the fence, and once I was outside the confines of the cemetery, all the voices stopped. I was breathing hard as I looked back, and it just looked like any other cemetery. Old stones standing stock still. The wind blew through the trees. My fear slowly drained away. I continued my walk down the sidewalk and looked back into the grounds and saw no more strange shapes. From that point on, I made sure not to cut through the cemetery by myself, but one time when I was walking by, I heard the whispers and the dark-eyed crow seemed to watch my every move. In my small hometown on the Ohio River, there's an old historic part of town called Bony Fiddle. It remains unclear why the residents call the community Bony Fiddle. Some say that Bony Fiddle was an anglicized version of the German term for good times, goodwill, or good health. Some people have claimed that it was a reference to a field of bones from slaughtered livestock, which is pretty darn creepy if you ask me. Back in those early days, around the same time that history's most famous serial killer, Jack the Ripper, began stalking the streets of London's Whitechapel district, a very sad and very disturbing figure was seen walking the streets of Bony Fiddle. A resident saw a woman dressed in rather heavy version of traditional black mourning clothes. She clutched a small child very close to her chest. A few nights later, two men were in town for supplies when the same woman brushed past. The chilling aura that accompanied her left the men very scared. Now, these stories were told to me as a kid growing up, and I thought they were total crap. But one day, many years later, when I came back to visit my hometown, I was down in good old Bony Fiddle after visiting some friends, and I saw a shape moving down the street. It was not very defined and I really wasn't sure what I was seeing, but as it got closer, I could see it was a woman in black, just like those ancient stories. I felt my legs turn to rubber. She walked right toward me and I could not move. 
She closed in on me and I could smell rotting flesh. Then she passed right through me and it was like a cold jellyfish went through my body. I was shaken and I almost puked from the awful feeling. When I recovered, I shakily turned and saw her cross the street and head for the bridge in that part of town. I followed her down the street. She floated along the ground, coasting silently down the sidewalk. She continued to the bridge over the river and stopped in the center, where she just stood looking at the water below. I held my ground, not wanting to get any closer. After a moment or two, she looked over at me and then she pulled her arms up to reveal she had a child. The child wailed in fear. She held the child above her head and I wanted to scream for her to stop, but no words came out of my dry mouth. She threw the baby into the river and I heard a splash that cut off the child's cries. She looked back at me with glowing red eyes. For the second time that night, I was locked in place. Then she pulled back her veil to reveal a skeletal face. I nearly fainted and then her ghostly image faded away as a car blew past me. The person must have thought I was a drunk. I staggered off the bridge and went to a local bar where I sat silently drinking and remembering those stories I heard as a kid and that I have doubted. Now I knew they were real, and the past never stays dead.